but let's just see if you can try to keep your rib cage as a still point. So go ahead and weight the right sit bone, trying to keep your rib cage as a still point rather than shearing it over. Okay, that's better, good. And then just see if you can go the other way, go weight the left sit bone. Yeah, nice. Okay, so she's figuring out how to do it on the stool. Go ahead and go back and forth for a few times. and go left. And again, realizing that it's fairly artificial on a stool, I'm observing that she has a little more struggle to organize her body around left hip hike. And um, Monica, does that resonate with you at all? I feel very challenged putting weight into my left sit bone, okay. hiking on the right. Okay and go the other way. So can you feel when you go the other way that you're shifting the rib cage to the right almost immediately? Put your weight on your right sit bone. And do you feel how you shear immediately? Like rather than, so when you put your weight on the left sit bone, do it again. There's more of a lateral flexion in the rib, the, the rib cage responds with a lateral flexion. Whereas when you weight the right sit bone, the rib cage responds with a shear. And I'm just wondering, yeah, which will eventually create a left lateral flexion. So does everybody understand that um, you can have an on access lateral flexion without sh a shift in the rib cage, but if the rib cage shifts, you're going to get a contralateral flexion in the spine as a response. So, so if I don't shift my rib cage, yeah. this is actually how far I can go. Yeah, yeah. So I just noticed that it's less organized. So hiking left pelvis is you want to shift the rib cage.